And we're live. Welcome to another episode of Watch Talk with the Punters. I'm Welcome Blue Shirt. Everyone. Thomas Burnett I'm, is with me. Uh, yeah. And our special guest is Clive, the Watch Wrangler, a.k.a. the Rancher. Howdy, everyone. Howdy. Wanted to say hello to everybody in the chat. We got William Rizzo, Underachieving Watch Collector, McLovin, Mason One, and Mark P. Orange Hand. Hello, EPRFA. everybody. Yeah. EPRFA. Welcome, my friend. Thank you for joining us. Great to see you all there. Yeah. Now, I'm trying to figure something out. Yeah, you're breaking up, Thomas. Yeah, you're, you're, you're coming through all uh, all pixelated. Um, hey, Clam Walker. Um, anyway, so today uh, what we're right. going to Is it to cold do... over in the U.S.? Um, it's in like the forties here, so it's not too bad. Fifties. Yeah. I don't know what that is in, in Celsius over for you Europeans, but, uh, it's, it's, it's nice here. It's nice here. Uh, so what we wanted to do was, uh, the Omega extravaganza part two. Um, last week we did part one with, uh, James from showcase watches and we focused on, um, new and recent Omega, uh, and today uh, we want to uh, focus in on uh, vintage Omega, uh, and uh, the person with that I know the most recent uh, or the most uh, well-rounded uh, vintage Omega collection is, of course, uh, the Rancher. Are you you with us, Thomas? Thomas, you there? Well, I think the problem is, is that, as we know, the English, anyone that's had cars from the 70s, mm -hmm. especially MGs, MGBs, they they know that the British cannot make wor electronics worth a shit. So <laughs> Wi-Fi routers probably, is pro probably got it like UK made and probably quite proud of it. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I'm going to remove you, Thomas. Uh, try and connect up again, okay? Actually, but they're about the only ones that can make Italian electronics look reliable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, how's everybody doing? Uh, uh, again, glad you could all join us. Uh, we'll give Thomas another minute here, and uh, hopefully, he can uh, straight out straighten out his uh, connection issues and and uh, and join us. If not, then we'll uh, we'll uh, delve right into. Uh, your collection. Ah, it's not really the same without Thomas's little. This micro ran release this, and this micro. Ran. <laughs> yes, uh, unfortunately, we don't have uh, NS something with us uh, today, and uh, um, hopefully Neo and uh, and Flip and Zip will join us too. I'm keeping my eye out for them. What are you guys uh, all wearing today? I have my. Uh, my 1861 Speedmaster on. Do you, are you wearing your avatar or are you wearing one of your uh, Omegas? Uh, actually, I was wearing the Apple Watch. I can go change real quick. I Actually, I was going to go change real quick while Thomas was talking about the... Uh, while Thomas was going to go... While Thomas went all... Uh, what's on the wrist on us? Mm, yeah, well, he, Thomas was going to do the news. Yeah. Um. But uh, it's okay. You can stick with your Apple Watch. Nobody's nobody cares. No, they really don't. <laughs> now, McLovin, McLovin, um, I would say a field watch, more specifically a tactical watch, if you know what I mean. Neo, what's up, man? Hop on. I sent you the link and uh, your email. Hopefully you can join us. Oh yeah, always. Yeah. yeah, what I like about Neo is that 
a lot of uh, a lot of experience and a great perspective. Mm-hmm. As a yes. Result of that. Yep. Up oh, there's Thomas. Thomas, you there? Can you hear us? Thomas. Yeah, you you still got a funky connection there, my friend. Right. I'm gonna. Can you keep me on the computer so that I can be links? And I'll try. I'll join yeah. on my phone. Okay. Oh, I think he's on his phone. No, maybe Thomas is doing a Catherine Hepburn impersonation. <laughs> and if you got that joke, you're definitely over fifty. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, let's just wait until he pops up on on the phone, and I'll keep uh, I'll keep both uh, both ones. Nope. And uh, there he is. Oh, and there's Neo. Neo, what's up, man? Can you hear us? Is Neo is Neo in the UK too? No. Neo's in Okay. North of you. In the Midwest. Upper hmm. Midwest. Thomas, can you hear us? Wow, we're having major connection issues today. Sorry about that, uh, folks. Hashtag rooted routers. Yep. There we go. I'll try this one. Thomas, can you hear us? Yes, I can, my friend. Yeah. Oh, uh, there we go. Much better. All right, good, good. That one. All right. Very good. You want me to uh, pull up the, we'll start with the news? Yeah. Now, can you start, can you, you may call you so we'll have the Action 5 news team, uh, Stop ring to uh, start the news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, right, so. Okay, let's. Uh, I think live news with Gary McNulty. Yeah, so this watch, as well as its uh, sister brand, which is Blanc Pan, uh, Brega has uh, recently introduced a special Valentine's Day edition this year. These are often, well, each year, sorry, and uh, these have often been takes on existing ladies' watches that have been dressed up and with added diamonds or mother of pearl, and they're interesting mechanically. For uh, 2021, Brega is presenting the Rain de Naples Coeur 9825, which is a surprisingly interesting watch, coming in, in the egg-shaped Rain de Naples case. The Coeur edition, Coeur is a... Um, heart in French is inspired by 18th century expanding hands, uh, which uh, have which were popular in pocket watches. Uh, these pocket watches featured heavily decorated oval cases and were very popular on the Chinese market. In the modern day, Parmigiani was the first to replicate this complication, min miniaturizing for the oval pantograph. And uh, Breguet has furthered the idea of streamlining the original concepts and have created an elegant time display that is well suited to its ovoid case. The hours are indicated on a disc which is visible through the small window in the middle mm. of the dial, which, while the minute is read with a heart shaped hand, which is uh, joined at two points. It's actually two hands which each mirror, uh, which are a mirror image of each other. And together they mm -hmm. form an outline of a heart with another tiny heart at the tip. This heart changes shape that goes around the dial. And the uh, heart hand expands as it moves towards the 12 o'clock position. Interesting. This expanding hand mechanism is predicted four patents, according to Ray. So it's a really interesting looking watch with, uh, as I say, these uh, hands that sort of Expanders say go go to the tip at twelve o'clock and then contract as they uh, come back down again to the six. So mm. it's, uh, it moves uh, the the heart shape moves uh, according to the shape of the dial. So it's fast. It's, um, costing a Very pretty penny though. This one it's it is. 
from Brand Boutique, forty-six thousand one hundred dollars. No. Going to be, uh, it's a uh, thirty-six point five times um, forty millimeters, and it's ninety-six thick. It's uh, eighteen carat rose gold set with diamonds, and it's a uh, seven eight a a zero. It's an automatic forty-hour power reserve, and the hours and window minutes on a heart shape of uh, shape with changing length. It's only going to be twenty-eight pieces. This, so it's mm -hmm. twenty-eight pieces. Uh, if you want to uh, six thousand You still with us, Thomas? Well, he's got a bad connection. Yeah. Neo, are you, are you there? Are you able, to hear, me? Are you able yes. to hear me? Yes, we can hear All you. Right. All right. Hello, humanity. How is everyone? <laughs> I'd say pretty like, you know, it's it's always hard for me to look at women's watches and say that's a cool women's watch because i'm not a woman but that does look like a really cool watch though doesn't it <laughs> no that's a valentine that's a valentine watch yeah fuck it i'm gonna wait till the 15th and get it for half off <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of expensive i think uh if i saw down here it was like forty six thousand uh, dollars Twenty-eight pieces, and it's forty-six thousand one hundred. So it's a it's a little pricey, but it is you know, and it does have it is rose gold set with diamonds. Uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do, you, what do you mean it's too expensive? Like, does does that mean you need to like step up and get a woman that's worth this watch? Or no, I just... <laughs> no, right, but but right, it's like how do you how do you tell like a guy can't say it's too expensive because then the the comeback is, no well, of, of course woman is, you, you, your woman is worth it of course of course of course um, but it is it it is kind of cool um, and uh, you know if that's is within your budget absolutely well, it's something very distinctive that's for sure maybe if we're talking like a C plus plus possibly. Mm -hmm. Thomas, you back with us? Can we? Yeah, get it looks like it's going to be one of those days, doesn't it? It's uh, oh, great. I make the sexist talking, comment just as Mayor comes on. <laughs> Hi, Mayor. Hear... Hi, Mayor. Can you hear us? Okay. Hey, Megan. Yeah, I can, welcome. Hey, fine. Okay, Hi, good. Megan. Welcome, Megan. Thank you for joining us. All right, uh, we'll stop this and then we'll go to the next one. Megan was light because she was buying one of them. Go ahead, Tom. So this is, this oh. is the Hortolance HL Sphere 2. It's a spherical 3D jumping hour. It was founded two decades ago. Hortolance has long specialized oh. in unusually Sorry, designed timepieces. I got the Ming on, Thomas. Sorry. Let me... Uh, oh, it's okay. Yeah, sure. Let me uh, stop that. And... Yeah, featuring a, a featuring a three-dimensional spherical indicator, the new HL Sphere Two is uh, very impressive. How's there? The, we go. The familiar jump hours, jumping hours complication that few have managed to do. A follow-up to the original HL Sphere introduced last year, the HL Sphere Two is essentially swapping out the uh, muted blue and grey palette of the original version with a solid pink gold dial. Although the watch design isn't new, the spherical jumping hours remains novel and interesting. While many conventional jumping hours rely on flat discs that move once an hour, the spherical jumping hour is more impressive than the autonomous get credit for. It's of a very similar ilk to Erwerk satellite cube time display on their flying hours, UR110 mm -hmm. and uh, 210. But because Autolence isn't prominent as his peers, the brand complications don't get as much recognition as they otherwise should. This watch um, actually evolved from the brand's very first watch, the HL04, which was released in 2004 with a TV shaped case, retrograde minutes, and jumping hours that indicated in a con conventional disc based manner. The uh, Sphere 2 retains the same, the same shape and retrograde minutes. 
but swaps the hours disk for a large sphere that spins rapidly at the top of the hour, moving seemingly in random fashion before starting to show the current hour. Um, this display becomes the distinguishing feature of the watch, both with stationary and in motion. The construction looks like a spinning ball f floating at random, and it gets this look because two blue titanium halves making up the sphere are mounted on a single axis located to the uh, case back, creating the impression that it's floating. Although it's fixed to a single axis, the sphere rotates three different on three different axes, which is uh, achieved with the use of several conical gears arranged mm -hmm. at various angles, allowing the conversion of motion into different planes. It's a fascinating watch, but uh, again, it's coming in at quite a lot of money, this one. This one's going to be, can set you back $110,000. And there's only 28 pieces of this one. It's the 18, 18 karat white gold case, mm -hmm. uh, solid mm -hmm. pink gold dial. It's uh, 19, 39 by 46 millimeters and 12 millimeters thick, but there's a little, there's a, there is a little um, video on this uh, page that shows you it rotating slowly, I think. Yeah, these uh, guys make really amazing pieces. They're, um, unfortunately, like, the cases are quite large, you know, yeah. and, and I say this even as somebody who loves his Pam and some larger size watches. This, These are quite large watches, but... And they do go down to a fairly good discount, to be honest, on the aftermarket. And they and they are really sweet watches. I mean, right? It's it's the same money behind Moser. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the, the, I I like them. I just wish they were more compact in some way. Right. But mm -hmm. freaking awesome! I like them. I like the ideas of them. I like. I'm glad that they're around. But they're just big. Interesting, interesting though, aren't they? Yeah, very interesting. Very interesting. Though. Well, I think it's really interesting that that complicated of a watch is that thin. Right. Yeah, I mean, you, it's not you're overly right, thick. So it's just big. Yeah, it's just big without the sphere. the The glass is oval, sort of mounted over the sphere. But it's you, you're right, um, Neo. It's, it's only twelve millimeters thick. You're right, Clyde. Yeah. It's not not too big. I just oh, want to no, welcome they... welcome uh, some more people that have popped in. Uh, Mr. Perpetual, Salty Paul. Uh, who else did I see? Monkfish, James Con Eleven, Crappy Luxury. Uh, welcome everybody. Appreciate you uh, stopping by. Yeah. So Orange Hand. Yeah. Welcome and everyone. James Good to see you all. Are all. Uh, very aware of the brand they have some pretty cool insights if you're following the chat orange hand says he likes their pinball machine better <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah I've, I've looked at these watches mm -hmm. before they get they, you can find them at a very good discount and again like mechanically engineering wise they're they're really amazing mm-hmm but you have to like the look. Yeah. Definitely interesting, though. Good uh, good find, yeah. Thomas. Yeah, well, it was just part of the news. It was in the news this week. I mean, really interesting, as I say. We move on to the uh, Ming, which is... Uh, All right. Which has been... This has been covered by quite a few channels. I'm in reviews, and Bobby Legs has covered this, and... Uh, yeah, I'm 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 not too familiar with Ming. I've I've seen a few of their watches, but reflecting on Ming's first watch, the uh, twenty seven oh one, the brand have come up with a bit of a redesign in the twenty seven oh two, retaining the same case and movement, but incorporating a sapphire dial that has a gradient finish. So that's on a Clou de Paris Guilloche uh -huh. uh, ring around its perimeter. The twenty seven oh two also marks the end of the twenty seven series, and Ming will. Retire, will be retiring the series permanently once its production is complete. Uh, Ming watches regularly sell out upon their launch, which only goes 
does to prove their popularity and uh, it's understandable that the brand is gradually increasing the prices of its watches as it repositions itself in a more a market, as a more market brand. The products are being upgraded too though, so it's partially justified. While the brand's inaugural 17 series was well liked for being great values around uh, 1500 Swiss francs, the mm -hmm. 2702 and the recent launches like the Diver 1801 seem to indicate that Ming's budget days are over. But unfortunately, uh, the 2702 is uh, very similar to the 2701, and which in turn was an upgrade of the 17 series. And uh, both the 2702 and 2701 share the same case and movement, which is an ETA per uh, 7001, which has been significantly re reworked by Schwartz Etienne, uh, the brand that does most of Ming's production and assembly. Mm -hmm. The movement has been partially skeletonized, leaving narrow bridges that are created that are coated in a matte black, allowing the entire wheel train to be visible. This is a build as a formal dress timepiece, which explains the lack of luminous material on the dial. Right. The contrasting contrasting colours of the dial, hands and indices make it a very legible timepiece. It's uh, a lovely looking piece, but it's uh, it is. coming in at it's coming in at just under 4, five thousand. Yeah, yeah, just under five thousand Swiss francs. Yeah, so it's about so five thousand dollars and change. Yeah, there's only going to be two hundred pieces of this. It's a limited edition. Yeah. It's uh, a hand wound hand wound watch as well with forty two hours power reserve, and it's uh, thirty eight millimeters by six point nine thick. So it's nice and so, it's nice and small. Yeah, it's a lovely looking watch. It's as you say, it's nice, nice formal dress watch, uh, thirty eight millimeters, and six point nine thick. It's nice and small. It's a lovely fitting watch. But um, yeah, coming coming from fifteen hundred in the old days to just under five thousand now, it's a uh, right. It's it's a bit of a bit of a gamble to take. You got to really want, got to really like Ming watches. Well, they. they, they, they Go ahead, Neil. I was going to say, has anyone seen one in the wild? I have not seen one in the wild, but I, I tip my hat to them. They have definitely captured the, the hype watch market um, and then only putting out 200 pieces of these. Um, they have a lot of people talking about them. Um, you know, they're interesting. They, they've uh, always uh, caught my eye from the very first release, mm -hmm. and their die watch has been the most compelling option I've seen for myself. Mm -hmm. The dive watch uh, looks lovely, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 But uh, there's just something cold about them. When I just look at them as an image, for myself personally, in terms of just aesthetic, like I don't think I would, this, this doesn't speak to my aesthetic, mm -hmm. but if I did like it, I don't know if I would spend $5,000 on it. That's sort of like $5,000 is, the There's a lot of watches out there for five thousand, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, to me, it's almost reminiscent of early Panerai, because it's a really cool design, just based upon ETA watches. Yeah, you know, there, there's. I mean, I've, I've, like I said, I've, I've been noticing them since the very first one. I keep an eye out at them. The dive watch. I mean, I, I came close to buying the dive watch. If I had really? more time to think about it, I may mm -hmm. have bought it but it just disappeared right away. I was like, well, yeah. I'm not ready to commit because you have to look at it in an instant, say I want it or not. And right. that's not how I usually buy watches, but I think when they target, these guys are going to come up with something that will just kind of surprise us, I think. So you're not ready to actually start minging yet, right? No, I'm not. I can't minge. I'm not. <laughs> just want to welcome uh, Geezer to the, uh, to the chat. Hey, uh, hey Geezer, welcome. Hey guys. Hi, Giza. Yeah, so this is the Ming. And, uh, Want to move on to the on last that. one? Yeah, the last one was the Resence Type 1 Squared. And the Belgian watchmaker Resence have already made their mark on the world of watches with their oil filled cases and uh, inventive design centered on a planetary time display. Mm. And uh, to mark their 10th anniversary, Resonance released four limited edition X-series watches, 
which we've just seen the final release in the form of the uh, Type 1 Square Decks. Each of the anniversary models was based on a standard model, cleverly tweaked to distinguish each one. And the recurring theme throughout the quartet was uh, green dials, albeit, a different sh albeit different shades, as well as mm -hmm. various modifications. The new Type 1 Squared is metallic and olive green with a novel day and night indicator that uses coloured ceramic balls. This was developed for neuroscientists at Harvard and is a, is a string of coloured ceramic balls that Ressence calls the time by colour system. The neurologists proved that humans best recognise time in terms of colours and not conventional hands. That is because the brain is most reactive to colours associated with body, uh, the body's biological clock, for example, the changing colours of sunlight as the sun goes down. The mm -hmm. ceramic microbolts on the day-night display are in four colours that evoke shades of natural light and move along a groove track. And it's powered by an ETA 2892, mm -hmm. which has the Resonance Orbital Convex System, which is the ROCS. Uh, which is the planetary display where each sub-dial rotates on its own axis, all the while orbiting the main dial. And the day-night indicator is based on the uh, same principle as the other indicators, really. But there, there you can see in that picture there, where, where's the, below just where the man is inserting the balls into the day-night indicator, and it's, uh, it's really interesting. Mm. Well, as long as your balls don't turn blue, you're all right. Well, there are some blue ones in there. <laughs> that can be distressing. Now, what does it mean if you start if you start seeing brown balls? What's the time for then? Um, is that like a does that show that first thing in the morning? <laughs> Could do. Well, I, I, Tim Timasso is a very big fan of of Resence. Um, <sighs> I have to admit, I love, the, I love wrestling. Yeah. I mean, th this one's yeah. coming in at twenty three thousand five hundred dollars. Yeah, it's they're going to make crazy. 40, 40 pieces of this. It's forty one millimeters by eighteen millimeters thick. It's titanium, and it's uh, using the caliber ROCS one automatic, which again is an ETA variant. Mm. It's a thirty six hours power reserve, and uh, I love it. I just love it. I love wrestling. Nice, I nice. I have to admit, they've always held my fancy as well. What is it about them that we all like? Well, I guess it's not we all, but a lot of us seem to like them. What, what do you think it is about them? It's different. It is yeah. completely different. It is completely yeah, different. In, in their it's, innovation, it's, isn't it? Yeah, but it's it almost it's a mechanical watch that looks digital. I, I think maybe this is the gem power of the twenty first century. Yeah, I yeah, I don't know what right. about them that I love, but I'm always very drawn to them. We need an ID guy segment on this. Mm -hmm. yeah. ID guy, tell us why we love the resin. You know, it, it it's never done really that much for me. I, I appreciate the engineering, and it's filled with oil, and and the whole dial rotates. I, I, I again, I appreciate the engineering. It just it doesn't uh, it doesn't float my boat. It's just not my thing. I'm, I'm a pretty conservative and uh, traditional watch guy. It's good. But it's good. It's, it, I mean, it, we, we can't all like the same watches. Yeah. It'd be very boring if we only wanted a three dial, plain three dial watch. True. Uh, but it's definitely it's definitely interesting. That's for sure. And like I said, you can't argue with the engineering. It, it's very cool. Yeah. Think about it, it's filled with oil. Should, theoretically, you should never need lubrication. Right. Well, I think you do have to get it. Uh, you do have <laughs> to get it. Uh, Just kidding. Just kidding. That's all right. You do have to get an oil change every five thousand miles. Uh, yeah, I think I think that. You do need to change your oil in these watches. Once once they get service, they'll definitely change the oils on them. I would have thought. But yeah, really interesting stuff for this watch. I thought so. 
I so Clive, yeah. you've got, you've got, you've got, you're going to tell us about your Omegas. You're going to tell us about your uh, fascination with vintage Omega. We've got some treats in store. No, we just do fun. indeed. Some of them, yeah. Um, I've had other ones before, believe it or not. But um, in, before in the past, I've had like uh, oversized, almost like military uh, Omegas from the 50s. I've had like a, I guess it was a 120 Seamaster, mm -hmm. 60s, but I uh, wasn't a fan about that one. But the ones I really do like are the ones I've kind of held on to. Shall I start you off with some of the ones I've had in the past, or still got, should I say? Blue yeah, go ahead, take, please. Blue Shirt can take you through some of those pictures that I've Oh, okay, hold on. To. Hold on. Just cancel that. Uh, where'd you put it in the chat? Yeah, just in the chat. I put I put three links to Omegas. Oh, okay. I have to th I have to thank Blue Shirt for this because I ran across the Universal Genève Compacts. I completely forgot. I, <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, shit! I forgot I had this one. Oh, oh. Damn. All right, just give me one second here. Uh... I mean, I I. I... This first Omega that uh, we're going to look at is uh, one that um, it's not the not an exact uh, picture of the one that I've got, mm -hmm. but it's uh, a 1950s one that I inherited 20 years ago, and this is gorgeous. It started me off. It's got a, a beads of rice bracelet, and it's uh, it's about 34 millimeters um, wide. Mm. And uh, it, it 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 it's really nice. It's 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 a lovely looking watch. It's it's. I mean, you can tell that in the fifties that this is what uh, the the accepted size would have been. You know, for mm -hmm. a, for a sort of dress watch for somebody. And uh, but also the the next link was. The dial on mine is is more like the neck the watch in the next link. Okay. Which is uh it's 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 an explorer type dial, but the the case of mine is exactly like this. And like the, this the one? The, yeah, the exactly like this and the bracelet mm -hmm. is exactly like this. But uh I mean I think Omega's heyday were were the fifties and the seventies and the the the, the they just came out with some cracking watches. Mm. They, they, I think. Well, it was more the race between them and Rolex is more of a neck and neck. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. it was. It was very different back then. Uh, yeah, very different. All right, so let's go. We'll move on to the next one, Thomas. Yeah, sure. So the actual dial of my watch is more like this watch. It's an Explorer dial with a, a three, six, nine, and twelve on it. Mm. But it's a it's a lovely dial. It's a, I really really enjoy it. And uh, very nice. Yeah, it's. A, but I, as I say, I, I I mean, these are small watches. 34 mm -hmm. millimeters 30, right. 30, 34 millimeters so and um yeah cracking watches very nice all right and we'll move to the last one Yeah, the last one. This was haunting mm. me for a while, this one. The Baby mm. Plow Prof. And uh, I, I had to get one of these. This is a 1970s uh, model. It was... Um, I mean, the Plow Prof, we all know about the Plow Prof. But this was uh, brought out as a uh, sort of more accessible version to, mm -hmm. for the, uh, for the um, market. Uh, rather than the big heavy plow prof, you know, this is a more accessible and one to see master 120. This was mm -hmm. what's the and, size uh, of a Thomas? This is about 
It's about 38, 38 millimeters, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's great. I just love that orange minute hand. I was drawn to it. The orange minute hand of the plug prof, and uh, I just love those plonger professional hands. Those plonger hands. Mm. Was, I'm sure. I'm sure orange fan in by feels the same way about it. Yeah, I was it, sucked in by it. It's definitely between your your Kermit and this. These are my two favorite watches that you own, by far. Yeah, yeah. This this one's really lovely. The name, the shark mesh bracelet with it as well is just just amazing to wear. It's just lovely. Really, is something else. And this was new old stock, correct? Yes, new old stock. So there's a there's a company in Australia, I believe, called uh, Watchco, mm -hmm. and uh, they were they were um, gathering lots of using lots of old stock um, Omega parts and making up Seamaster three uh, hundreds and uh, the Baby Plow Prof these ones. And uh, quite a few uh, oh, 70s Omega divers over the past 10 years or so. And, uh, so the, you could get a new old stock one, but they, as I say, they, they were new old stock and uh, you had to order them from Australia. So, mm -hmm. uh, But I didn't get mine from them. I got mine secondhand from somebody who had got it from them, which is a bit, a bit of a, a drawn out uh, procedure. But. Um, yeah, I don't yeah, know I'm if I'm really from... happy with mine. Yeah, I really don't know about buying us watches from Australia anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, this is just just where they happen to be based, Clive. I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely a cool watch, Thomas. It's funky, uh, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. You know, not it's not as funky as the the regular Ploprof, but it, it it definitely has a it takes a lot of the cues from it. Yeah, um, you, can tell. you know it's more wearable. Yeah, it's still got that awesome shark mesh bracelet. Yeah, and you still almost, got the hands. Almost Seiko-ish in a way. For some, I'm trying to figure out why. Yeah, it, it is a bit, Clive. You're right. It's got that Seiko, that modern day Seiko look. Yeah, do they, uh, they take? I was going to make the same comment earlier. Like this is the Seiko. All the Seiko modders are trying to get to or something. It's not true. That's not a true statement, but it's trying to it speaks towards the, the the sort of the vibe that you get from this. Mm. Very cool, Thomas. I like it. Yeah. So move on to Clive's uh, gems. He's got some of those. Okay. Let's pull that baby up. We'll start with the big boy first. I don't know if I happen to mention getting this one or not. Mm, you might have once or twice. <laughs> That's a beauty, isn't it? Is that is that the eight six one? No, 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 no. That's the one hundred five point zero one two dash six six. It was made in October of nineteen sixty seven, so it's a month older than I am, and it's held up a hell of a lot better. Beautiful, isn't it, Clive? That's the yeah. birth year three, two, one. Then, yes, yeah, it is. Gorgeous. You can't you can't ask for much more in a three twenty one than this than this watch. So this is the one that James from Showcase Watches said was the his favorite, didn't wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and of course, you know, one thing they could have done better with it, looking back, is that of course when I had it serviced, that's when the loom from the minute hand fell out, but. That's fairly common. That's a fairly common problem. All right. Yeah. For the references, because it is just one big long uh, ribbon of relatively, you know, at fifty years on, fragile, brittle loom. If it if they'd had like a divider in, mm -hmm. probably would have, you know, probably not a problem with it. But the, back then, the, that was tritium, correct? Yeah. Well, yeah. No, it still is tritium. Yeah, it still is right. Right. Tea is what's made tea. So yeah, it hasn't been replaced. And of course, oh well, we I could we could put more loom. No, 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 no. But 
just all the things you look for. I'm just really, really fortunate that I happened upon this one when I did. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the, I, I think I would get mugged for the bezel for Pete's sake. Yeah, yeah, the dot over 90 for sure. Well, no, just the overall condition of the bezel, though. That too. And the story with this one is I actually, this one was available. Um, this is why you make friends with watchsmiths, guys, <laughs> because a watchsmith was getting this into service. This is like less than a mile from my place, mm -hmm. from my abode. And he mentioned, I just got this in a service, and I mean, service, and they're mentioning it, uh, they're interested in installing it. And, um, you know, um, the only downside is bec it, because, it, oh, um, it's also safe wing because the hollow uh, end link at 12 o'clock was dented. Mm -hmm. it was kind of flopping. It was you know, held together, held the bracelet stayed on, but that link was flopping in there, uh, you know, like a trout just pulled out of the, pulled out of the stream. And literally, um, it was a five dollar fix at a local watch shop. It's, it, it's a fantastic watch, uh, Clyde. It really is. The only trouble with it is the bezel. God, you know, uh, something happens to that bezel. You know, it is aluminum. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's vintage. Uh, are you going on as a keeper forever, says Megan, but I'm considering selling MK. Yeah, I Michael, just saw that. Michael Kors? <laughs> I, I think I think she meant mine. But no. uh, are you uh, keeping it, this watch around Clyde for uh, you know, because it is a really cool historical watch, or are you keeping it because and it's a birth year watch, even better. Yeah. Hmm. And in the meanwhile, I, I went and found the appropriate box for it and the archive from the uh, extract from the archives for it. So um, the only trouble is, is that bezel is so, I mean, ugh, it, you know, if I could cover it, I want, uh, whenever I walk out, walk around with it, I want to like literally cover it with like five things of saran wrap or bubble wrap. Right. I, I mean, it, it deserves to be worn, but you need to wear it judiciously. You, you need to be careful with it because you don't want to. Yeah. Oh, no, you don't want to. You don't want to smack around a bunch of judges. Fuck those guys. <laughs> I just want to say hello to uh, Blank Pan, <laughs> Oil Money Watches, Mackenzie. How are you guys doing, Forbes and Colossus? Welcome everybody. Um, it, it, it's this has got to be my favorite watch that you own, Rancher. Um, I love it. Well, you know, actually, and I've actually a few people, you know, on the other channel, I was told that the dynamic on the other channel changed as soon as I showed the horn one, this watch. Uh, it's, it's a special watch yeah. uh, and, and you're fortunate that you, yeah. you found it. You're, for, you're even more fortunate. You got it at the deal that you got it at. Um, and it ultimately ended up. Ultimately, the process that started ended up with me leaving the other channels. So it's an exceptionally special watch. <laughs> Clyde, if you were to sell this watch, would you 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 would have enough money to go get the brand new Ed White, right? I mean, like yeah. you'd be able to make a lateral move into that Ed White for sure. I'm correct. Kidding. Yeah. Did you do you ever think about that? Um, well, that one is forty two, and to me, that's a perfect size for it. Dead White's 39th, a little bit on the small side. And um, even though it's more delicate, even though it's in some ways it's more fragile, it, to me it's just more of a honest to goodness tool watch. No, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would have uh, – I'm asking you this because I'm thinking if I were in your position, what would I do? What would, would I keep it? Would I sell it? Would I just try to make a ladder or move into the Ed White? I don't know. I'd probably it keep it. Sometimes it, it basically it depends on which week you ask me, frankly. Um, sometimes I think it's just like, oh, I've just been sitting in the damn safety deposit box. Maybe uh, maybe I should, you know. I, on the I, 
personally, I think this watch is a keeper. Um, um, I, I don't think you should ever get rid of it. Um, I know Megan says she's thinking about selling hers. Um, I, I just think, you know, there's a finite amount of these. There's even a... a, 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 a True of all watches. Yeah. There's fewer of these in nice condition nowadays just because they were... They were um, they were tool watches and they were they were not baby they were beat you know they were really beat up um, and to find them now uh, especially like this um, you know it, it's like getting a, a vintage mill sub or uh, or sixteen fifty five you know that there's, there's not as time goes on there's going to be fewer and fewer of these things and. Uh, uh, oh, the, the, yeah, we just, could go out there. We could go out there right now, right? And if we wanted, let's say, a three-to-one movement, we could go find a Seamaster, and you could. It would probably be very easy to get it for what for less than what Clyde paid for this watch, obviously. Well, actually, AD Never Calling was trying to sell a three-twenty-one uh, Seamaster for the longest time. Mm. It's, it's amazing how cheap he sold that. I, oh, yeah. I, I, like, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, it's they start off fairly high price, but you could easily because mm -hmm. well, nobody's really buying them. Let's just be honest. Pe people are not buying the three two one Seamasters. They only want a three two one Spirit. Right. Correct. Correct. Welcome, uh, AD Never Calling. Good. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Um, yeah. This to me, this is just a, a very special watch, and it uh, you know evokes all kinds of. Uh, um, you know, special feelings. It, it's just a, it, it's a terrific watch. Oh, I would wear this watch every time I went to, oh, anytime I went watch shopping, I would go with this watch on. Yeah, but you know what? Half of the people in the in watch shops, they wouldn't even know what this was. They they would just be like, oh, nice old speedy. Mm -hmm. They would they wouldn't know what it is. But uh, thank you for sharing. Uh, this one with us because it's that it, it, it's just truly a, a special watch. Yeah, it's a beauty clan, really is. Thank you, I appreciate that. And a Berthier watch as well. I mean, what what a Berthier watch to get? Exactly. Sure. Of course, my the Avatar, the Droid Perico is also a Berthier watch, except no one gives a shit. <laughs> yeah, well, oh come, really? Yeah. No, no, no. Well, we haven't seen the we haven't seen a proper photograph of the Gerald Perigo yet. I mean, I've seen the Avatar, but I haven't really got to see it properly. So this is your A six one, is it? Yes, early right. eighty. And to me, this this is my favorite. This is my this is the one I take out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Now, at your, some point, your patina queen, as you put it. Well, it's a double patina winner. Because at some point, it was taken out and worn so much that the bezel is ghosted. Which, I, I mean, you know, I, I realize, and, and for some, it's kind of weird for Speedmasters, because for Omegas, if Rolex, if you got a ghost bezel on a, on a GMT... Or GMT Master or Submariner, everyone goes ape shit over it. it it's almost it's seen <laughs> like damage to a Speedmaster. I like it. It's still quite so. It's grayed out, but it's still quite legible. Uh, you can even tell the original dial has faded a little bit, somewhat mm -hmm. spider webbed. And then after that, after that, it would after being overused or being worn out and being getting a lot of exposure to the sun. It was then shut shut away somewhere for an extended length of time, and the indices and the loom all yellowed. So, right. so yeah, so it basically went to the convenience store, bought a ticket for the uh, patina lottery, and won twice. <laughs> and, then, and then decided, oh shit, I forgot to get the cigarettes. So we went back in the convenience store, and while I was getting the pack of cigarettes, it bought another ticket and won again. <laughs> won the lottery twice yeah and to me I, I love wearing this watch to me that is just as cool yeah yeah, yeah I know I know the other one's the 321 the other one that's the icon but to me this one is just as cool to wear oh I, I, I agree I agree and, and I think literally that 
whoever bought this originally must have just worn it very gently and and then shoved it away somewhere for a while. Well, no, no, no. It's he no, it no, that's not that's not why certain features of it are brown. That's but I'm bummed. Yeah. It's a great but, looking watch. It but, really is. But it's when a people, lovely watch. But when people, and God help me, um, you know, the horned one what basically was asked, what what would I look for? You know, what should a new person look go in Speedmasters? I would go something, I would go like 861 or an early 1861 and get some get something like this. Get something with get something with the cool patina on it. Get mm -hmm. something that's yellowed. Yeah. But it has to be specifically done in that order because um, if it um, if it yellowed first, then when it got all you know, the sunshine, the ultraviolet light would have bleached it out, bleached the patina of the indices and loom out. Hmm. Don't feel bad, William. I'm I'm older than Clyde is too, so yeah, you guys take care of yourselves. Now the you know it's just like you know the. You, the, the only difference you can really tell is that you actually use, <laughs> if you actually use the chronograph. So we and, all know about we all know about the Speedmasters and our big Omega uh, chronograph, but um, they they've done more, haven't they? And uh, you you've got some more photos to show us of those, haven't you? Like, you've got some. You got sorry? some. Uh, you've 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 sent us some more photos of other uh, chronographs. Uh, Omega do, haven't you? Apart yeah. from the Speedmaster. Yeah, and uh, exactly. we can look at some well, of those. Okay. I mean we are gonna six skip ahead to the Flightmaster then. Yeah. Flightmaster is also built on the eight eighteen eight sixty one. That is the third iteration or the last iteration of it. So it's not as colorful. It doesn't, you know, and also the uh, left hand dial, they switched functions of it halfway. Um, it is a it was a huge watch for the day. So it'd be about an average one, you know. But back back in this back in the day, that was almost considered like the the Panerai, the pilot's Panerai. Yeah, mm -hmm. big big watch. Yeah. But, um, and what's nice about this one is everything is yellow because it's cadium. 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 That was a that was a zero. That was a no additional cost option offered by Omega because the yellow could be seen by infrared lighting in. Uh, commercial cockpits at the time. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there's a lot more orange, orange and conventional ones. And to me, this kind of indicates that you know, so someone specially ordered it with this. So to me, it indicates that they're a pilot or a wannabe pilot. And just like and just like any other vintage Omega, lost some lube in the hands, but damned if I'm going to have it replaced. Right. So. So that you've got the you know you've got the Lamagna based eight sixty one chronograph, but you also have GNT on top of it. It's like Omega was trying to go out of its way to best Rolex, mm -hmm. and uh, three iterations of the watch. I think it was only made for like three years. Now, three basic iterations of the watch. If someone wanted to go in and say, "I want to get a complete collection." Of a sports reference, you you can't go wrong with the Flight Master, right? Um, they're still relatively, you know, they're still funky. They're still relatively undervalued. They're still unpopular. They are only only three, and well, not unless you count the precious metal version. But you could probably get all these, including the precious metal version, for less than what a freaking Kermit's going for now. I mean, it's, it's got that great. I, I love the um, minute track because it's got that mm -hmm. lovely sort of. It's, it's got that Moses Streamliner look and that sort of uh, Tintin look as well. The Tintin yeah. Speedmaster. It's got that uh, in and out sort of. And you'll uh, have to excuse the picture because the GMT hand is hiding between the. It's shy, so it's kind of hiding between the hour and the minute hand. Yeah, the blue GMT hand. Yeah. It's a lovely watch, though, Clive. I love it. The Flight Master is a really nice one. Really, it is cool. I love the pops of yeah. yellow. And yeah, the, same and here. Blue. 
definitely an interesting watch. Lovely. All right. So what we got next? Let's stop that, and then we shall move to uh, where are we next? Up, oh, we were just on that one. Sorry. All right. Uh, I was trying for close-ups of the dial and may have, should have probably backed up a little bit. This is the uh, Mark II Speedmaster. It was, you know, it also made for a short time in the early 70s. Uh, to no case, still with the 861 movement. Mm -hmm. Omega, thought, Omega thought it was very much an improvement on the original Speedmaster. So when it came out in the early 70s, when we were, you know, still going to the moon and everything, uh, what I heard basically Omega then approached NASA and said, hey, we've got this new watch. You can take it to the moon. And basically NASA said, um, we've already approved the old one. We're not going to uh, use government funds to do your research, to, to do your research and development and your advertising for you. No, we just we've got enough of the old of the regular Speedmasters. We'll keep using them. And again, very large, very chunky, very 70s. Uh, and they also did a reiteration of it uh, about five years ago, I think. But this is one of the original Mark II's from the 70, uh, from the early 70s. Lovely. Yeah, I mean, Orange Hand's got a Mark II, but I think that's a, a slightly later edition with the Orange mm -hmm. Hand. The Orange Hand, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. This is a lovely one, Clive, yeah. It is. Very similar di dials to the the A six one though I think and the uh, three two one on this one though it's very mm -hmm. similar dial is it's not not got the orange the racing uh, dial the racing minute uh, second hand does it it's got the no. it's got the normal broad sort of not a broad arrow minute and some people, second hand. Some people. Uh, no, please, after you. Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, well, no, he, go ahead. There's some people like, you know, the the racing, you know, the racing doll, it's a lot more col colorful, and some people just like the just the more conventional classic Omega dial and hand layout, and I just happen to be one of the lighter ones. It's it's a terrific watch. Um, I, I love the, uh, the sunken sub-dials. Uh, I'm glad Omega... On the new uh, three eight six one, went back to that. It, it's definitely a it, it's a great look, and this is just a really uh, it, it it's a funky looking watch. It really is. Yeah, but we're getting funkier next. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's move on. Uh. The Speedmaster 4, 4, 4.5. Now, um, not a Speedmaster Professional because it has the Lamagna 5100 movement in it. So this is an automatic, isn't it? So this has yeah. got a day, day and date uh, function, and it's an automatic. And so it has uh, an awesome freaking movement, the 5100. Yeah. Wow. Yep. And... Um, one of the things I really like about it, it now, if I was going to use any of my chronographs as a chronograph, it would be this one. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, and normally, and like I said, normally I'm not a fan of the day and day being at three o'clock to me. That just says cheap old Seiko and I'm have I overlook it, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, I overlook it, you know, um, but what I like about it is you'll notice it's not only just the second hand is centrally located, but you'll uh, right below the minute hand is also, it tracks the minutes mm -hmm. of the chronograph as well 
on the central hand. That is so much easier. I mean, this is something that your middle-aged track coach could use and not have to get his bifocals out. Yeah, yeah. with that airplane sort of minute hand, it's counting, yeah. And, wh and why is that, Rancher? Contrast. It's really hard to do <laughs> on a regular chronograph. Like, like yeah. try using a regular chronograph to cook a steak, right? So two, two and a half minutes, you have to flip it over. Good luck. Like you need a digital display or you need something like this where you can really see the minutes in detail. And that's simply because of, um, again, Omega's use. I mean, they've been doing chronographs for some time before they came out with this watch. So, so the good dial design, good layout. Good. Also, what's the word I was thinking of? Contrast. <laughs> and also the the it's and then with the fifty one and the the fifty the being this the minute hand on the fifty one hundred being centrally located just makes this a absolute winner for an, a usable chronograph. Yeah, uh, it, it's just it it's got a little bit of everything. Um, it has touches of you know the the the. The original Speedmaster. It has, uh, you know, the the the, the case. Of, it's got of touches of everything. It touches yep, of the of flight master. master. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's like an Omega, Omega all rounder, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't call it a comeback, and don't call it a reduced. Right. It's yeah, just. It, it, it's a real. It, it, it's a winner of a watch. I, I really like this one. So yeah, and like said, these, these were all regular production Omega sports watches, none of them limited edition, none of, right. know, but there a couple of years ago, but really all the, all these ones, well, including the 321, I realized, yeah, okay, fine. But um, I managed to get all these for less than what a uh, MSRP on a Submariner. Wow. There you go. Yeah. Okay, a sub date. And I know and it's been a couple of years ago, and I know prices, I mean, of course, prices have risen on everything. But yep. now it, and some people don't like the 70s, you know, the Tono cases, the the toughness, the weight, and everything else. Mm -hmm. But I think there's still comparatively tremendous value in a and Omega sports watches. Agreed. <laughs> Good one from Forb and Colossus here. He says, does Clive time his $2,000 coffee machine with a Mark IV? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's a, well, you're almost right, but it's a $2,500 coffee machine. It's also 4.5. <laughs> hey, if, if I bring five, cookies, five, would you make five, me five, an espresso? What? <laughs> if I bring you cookies, would you make me an espresso? Uh, sure. I have to admit it's, it's automatic. It's an, it's an automatic what super automatic. So it's okay. Uh, I'll, I'll go buy cookies instead of making them then. So should we, uh, check out your next one, Clive? Sure. We sure. could do that. And, and like I said, none of these, no surprises here. I've been talking about these watches for years. Yeah. Just, we haven't seen them. So we finally get to see them, which is great. Okay. So tell us about this one. Omega Cosmic, Seamaster yeah. Cosmic. And this is where, okay, yeah, and this is, I probably need to redo the, redo the picture on this one, but um, Cosmic is, it, it, I should have t backed up and taken a picture with a bracelet, integrated bracelet on this thing. Mm -hmm. so okay. 39 millimeters. And uh, it it's, when when I first ran across the Cosmics and started selling them, I first thought, okay, this is Omega coming back and trying to get in on some of that hot Gerald Genta action. Mm -hmm. So, okay, well, he's done this. Well, hey, look, guys, we're, we're, we've got integrated shit, too. Like, come on. You know, hey, look. Yeah, kind of like Omega was doing. Sometimes you could tell Omega was just trying to do harder, also with the Flymaster. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Our pile watch. Our pile watch is meant to, you know, and it has, it has the GMT, too. And and the chronometer, and the chronograph, and it's meant for the pilot for the special instruments and the special lights. You, no, no one wants one really. 
still fuck. <laughs> but then, then <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Doc. <laughs> no. The um. Uh, you know, <laughs> I was always joking. Oh, by the the three twenty one, I was always going to joke that I was going to salt a tans. Uh, I was going to salt to uh, salt the uh, dock. I said, if I, if I ever sell this, there's there's two conditions. Number one, uh, you tell Tanzil you paid half the price you pay me. You tell Archie you paid twice the price you paid. Nice. Just want to welcome uh, hands, knees, and toes. What's up, Hansi? And, uh, and Junior Johnson. Welcome, my friend. Thank Hi, you for Jay joining Jay. us. Um, so anyway, the Cosmic. Um, so anyway, Dennis Hudson time. Love him or hate him. Uh, but that New Yorker really knows, you know, he can be a, he can abri- be as abrasive as uh, sandpaper in a jock strap, but he definitely knows his way around vintage. And he was the one who corrected me on this, said, actually, Clyde, you got it wrong. Omega were, was doing the Cosmics for some time before Joel Denta ever uh, started, did the first Royal Oak. So. Interesting. Uh, yeah. And the funny part is, is that to access it, you really uh, you don't access the movement from the watch and um, from the back. It all is access. You all have to pull it out from the front. Of right. The right. So it's a solid case. Right. And I just like this one because, of course, integrated. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, thirty nine millimeters. So quite where I mean, yeah, thirty nine millimeters. Uh, the two thousand. So quite wearable. And I just love the. Uh, the bronze on the chocolate. Yeah. Forbin's asking how, how large is the cosmic? Do you know that I, size? I, for the, I say it to you now, verily for the third time as the cock crows, 39 millimeters. 39. Gotcha. Sorry. No, that's right. Um, and one of the, th- besides the looks and the aesthetics and everything else now looks, you know, a lot of the loom has fallen off just like any vintage Omega or any vintage watch, but it almost doesn't need it. Do you know why? Go ahead. Well, it's because it has contrast. Uh Of course. And yeah, to me, this, and this is like, this is one of my favorite, just put on and walk around. I guess a beater watch, but I'd like, unlike a Gerald Genta, unlike, unlike a Royal Oak or Nautilus or even a 222 or a uh, vintage uh, Ingenieur, you can walk around with this and if you uh, bang it into the, bang it on the automatic door walking to Sam's Club, you're not going to want to k- slit your wrists. Mm. No. Just, just want to welcome ID Guy to the stream. Uh, welcome. Hi, ID Guy. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we've got one more cosmic coming up. Yeah, we do. We do. Let me stop doing this. Stop doing this. (laughs) Uh, And we'll go up here. And where was the last one? There we go. Uh, That one's that one's the no. That one's just the Cosmic. It's not the Cosmic 2000. What is the difference between the two? Honestly, beats the fuck out of me. <laughs> These are both got integrated bracelets, son. Both integrated bracelets. But the Cosmics go all over the place. Mm-hmm. Uh, some have, uh, you know, some have non-integrated bracelets. Some have straps. Oh, and also, oh, yeah, also, look... Th- the cosmic they have also made some divers so if you like that if you like that plocroft look mm-hmm. seriously do a hard look around for an omega omega cosmic i mean for a um, seamaster cosmic diver really right it also has it and it yeah i think probably at least as well um as the blade it yeah it's the baby baby. It's a little brother to the baby profile or the baby baby profile or the yeah, baby. Yeah. Profile. Um, but just like anything else, before you go into vintage, <coughs> talk to your watchsmiths. Make sure you've yeah, got a couple of guys that can work on them. 
Yeah, for sure. Just want to welcome Bobby Legs in. Uh, hey, Rob, how's it going? Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Hi, Rob. Great it. to see you. Yeah. So we've uh, had lots of Omega talk, and uh, we 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 did a little um, feature last week with uh, where we chose some watches mm -hmm. uh, with a little with a little budget. Mm -hmm. I have of, yours uh, pulled up, Thomas. To, of a. Uh, Twenty-five thousand pounds or thirty thousand dollars. So we we went through them quickly last week, and we're just going to go through them quickly again because we've got some pictures that we can show, just so just so we can show the audience what we actually chose. And uh, yes, and no uh, no Rolex, no Omega. This is thirty thousand. No 000 Rolex, US. no Omega. Yeah. Only guess. Thomas got four Kickstarter watches, and he's going to put twenty-eight thousand dollars in his pocket. <laughs> 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 That's right. So um, I'm going to pull these up here. Um, oh, and it's kind of one of our ongoing segments. So, like, if the people in the chat wanted to submit three to four watches based on these rules, we would uh, highlight them every week. Yeah, if you wanted to put in the chat your um, watches. So this was the A384. Which was going for six thousand nine hundred pounds, which is a beautiful watch. I know seventy three maths got one of these, and uh, I'm dying to get one of these. I just need to get the money. <laughs> it's a beautiful watch. It really is. El Primero movement. Uh, yeah, gorgeous. Love it. Mm. So the next one you can skip on to quickly, and we'll okay. uh, Just go, go through these quickly. So no Rolex, but one that uh, Rolex made, a brand that Rolex made, uh, donated their movements to in the past, and Panerai. This is a Panerai 779. I love mm. this. I love the California dial to start off with. And I've never seen a California dial on a Luminor. And this Luminor no. is uh, PVD coated. And uh, it's, I've been getting into PVD coated watches quite a bit recently. I quite like the look of them. And I love this bun strap that it's on. Mm -hmm. So I, I, went for this I went for this choice. Sorry, Clive. The California dial is one of the radio mirrors, right? Yeah, normally on the radio mirror, yeah. But uh, this is on a Luminor. A it's a 44 millimeter, so it's not, you know, super ginormous. Yeah, it's not like a 47 millimeters like the radio mirrors are with the California dial. So, yeah, this is a uh, one that I went for. I really like this one. Very interesting, Thomas. I like it. Now, is it a special edition? I would imagine so, Clive, yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, no, that, I'm going to break in your house and walk through it carrying a Confederate flag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the next one coming up, we've got... Uh, Glass mm -hmm. original. I love this watch. I this actually, oh, I, yeah. tried this, I tried this one on, Thomas, at watch time. Uh, yeah. even last year, the year before, and you know, usually I'm not a big orange guy, but this dial is just when you the watch is so compact and trim, it fits perfectly on your wrist. Um, you know, 42 is kind of my sweet spot, but the dial is just absolutely it takes your breath away when you, when yeah, you, that when sunburst dial, the yep. sunburst dial with that. That effect that they've got on it, that sun, that sort of broken, broken up effect on it, this gorgeous. And it's got the big date on it as well. I love that big date. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just such a gorgeous watch, such a, a lovely dress watch uh, with a touch of something, something about it, something different. You know, it's just looks lovely. Really like it. it. It's just really what a nice looking watch that is. Yeah. Mm. So next one coming up. A little bit of money left over, so I went for uh, a Tudor Black Bay GMT Diet Pepsi. 
a watch that I've owned and Neo has. Love this watch. Yeah. I'm seriously considering at some point maybe getting this back. So I have the I chronograph, it. I have the chronograph, the diver, the dress watch, and the GMT. So that was my four. Mm. Wait, I don't think we're allowed to do Tudor. Yeah, just not Rolex. Oh, okay, okay. It's a great watch. It really is. I enjoyed my time with mine. Now, we could do Cellini, right? Because that's not really Rolex. Mm, no, that's really Rolex. No. That's really Rolex time. Uh, no. So uh, we can move on to the next choices. Okay, let me... Uh, I got to cue those up, so just bear with me, folks. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so if people want to submit three watches, you know, or four, it's not that four, hard. Four watches. I mean, you can go for one Grail and three three G Shocks. You can go for uh, spread it out and uh, mm. get four nice watches. Mm. You can go for, um, you know, whatever you like. But yeah, not Rolex, not um, Omega. So. Uh, yeah, put put your suggestions in the chat, and we can uh, we can bring them up. Uh, hold on, I kind of lost my my place here. Okay, that's that. And if you do it next week, we'll still bring them up. Yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Be be 25,000 pounds or thirty five thousand thirty thousand dollars. You've got. Mm. Okay. So we'll go here. I like Mason One's choices actually. Mm. Yeah, it's got some good ones. I don't know what the Zen 903 is. I have to look that up. That is the Zen version of the uh, Navitimer. Mm. Oh. That's when yeah. they bought the no, rights to the Navitimer. The Navitimer is like one of those watches I really, really want to love. Mm -hmm. So the, the this ones is, are way better than the Breitling ones, in my opinion. These are James Showcase watches, and uh, Showcase watches uh, James's picks. So he chose this Zenith, which is a real nice choice. And uh, a watch that we've seen CDC before. Gunner has been talking about this watch. Mm -hmm. lately. Yeah, I saw that. I saw he posted a video of it. Yeah. Well. Yeah, it, well, it's it's a Zenith open heart, so I guess it might be safe to buy it now. <laughs> so there's uh, that one. All right, there the with me. Shows, which was a, a lovely Zenith. I think there's going to be a lot of Zenith going on in this uh, with this theme because well, no Zenith has a Zenith has a lot to love. It's a great yeah, brand. They're, they're the best chronographs about, really, aren't mm -hmm. they? And uh, he's got this lovely glass with original CQ. Which is, I mean, he was saying he, he really get, he's really attracted to the CQ, and uh, I mm -hmm. think he's spot on. I think it's a lovely watch. We know it Tom is. Austin got one recently, and uh, uh, it's a it's a cracking watch. It's a love, love it. So wait a minute, wait a minute. So so far, you picked the Zenith. James picked the Zenith. You picked a uh, glass suit. James picked. A glass I, I picked a Panerai. I picked a Panerai, and James picked a glass suit. Oh, okay. okay. So this one looks like it's on a rubber uh, tropic strap. Yeah, it does come on a bracelet as well. I'm I don't know. Sure it looks all timexy to me. Yeah, I don't I get that it. at all. It's it's an interesting watch. Mm. It's an interesting watch. Less suit is so, uh, his next choice. Okay. This is an interesting one. Yeah, the Grand Seiko SBGJ237. Mm -hmm. It's a lovely, it's, it's a GMT watch. GMT, one. correct. Yep. I like it, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a high so, beat movement. It's a high it's, beat, it's yep. not a, yeah. It's not a spring drive, it's one of the high beat movements. But I, I really like it. Does, does Grand Seiko make a spring drive GMT? Um, I'm sure they do. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure not they will sure. Do. 
And I know they make the high beat, and I know they make a quartz. <laughs> they must. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. If you know, uh, put it in the chat, please, guys. <laughs> So there's this Grand Seiko, and you have one more choice. All right. Hold on. I'll stop. Which mm. is the Cartier Santos. Lovely looking watch. He said this would be his dress watch. Mm -hmm. Santos, Dominus. Which, uh, I love the Santos. Yeah, it's it, 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 it's a classic and an icon. There's many iterations. The dial, yeah, there's a white dial, a blue dial, a blue dial. Very interesting. People in the chat are posting really yeah, cool mini collections. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, guys. I'm not uh, ignoring you. It's just it's hard for me to, to monitor what's going on. So yeah, we'll look we'll look we'll look those up for future for future streams and put them in. Cool. No, keep, put, keep, guy keep putting them in. Yeah, please do, guys. Please uh, put your choices in. No, uh, no Omega, no Rolex. Did ID guy uh, enter his content enter on this or not? Um, well, no, I don't think he's, he hasn't. He hasn't passed me any watches to post up. No, he hasn't. I he think the next one's and the next one's a Neo's, I believe. Oh, okay. Mm. I think we've got Neo's choices coming next. Um, let's see. No, it's not that one. Okay. Just bear with me, guys, while I load these up. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, so we're going to go to... the Pelagos... Mm. Yeah, oh. left hand drive. Yeah. This is you yeah. know, your favorite of yours, isn't it, Neo? And tell us about it this is. one. I mean, sometimes I just think I should just go buy this watch. Why do yeah. I want to own it? Um, to me, it just seems like it could be. Um, it, it's my favorite dive watch out there, to be honest. It, it, it's yeah. definitely a cool watch. Um, when you see it in person, it, it impresses a lot more than uh, than when you see it online. It, it's it's really a cool watch. Yeah, the, the dial great price as well. Many it? It's a great value piece as well, isn't it? Definitely. And with the with the square indices, it it it, it works better with the snowflake hands. Yes, definitely, definitely. Yep. Yeah, I knew I knew Clyde would uh, would agree with that. Also. The the only quibble I have is, you know, if they could make that date just a little bigger. Mm. I think they didn't want to put a Cyclops on it. Um, no, they don't want to have to. All they'd have to do is just literally just infinitesimally make it to where it's the same size as the indice at, at 9 o'clock. At 9 o'clock, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no far bend. There's the, the left-hand drive is, is in-house. The ETAs are not left-hand. Right. I love that red date wheel as well. Yeah, yeah. I wheel. love. I lo you know, it's got that ruler date. Um, the um, the dial has many layers to it. Um, there's that splash of red. I mean, they are. They did write a freaking novel on the bottom. I can't stand that. Like, <laughs> well, you know, one, two, three, four, five lines. That's yeah, just, it's it's a little much. Yeah. Um, it's titanium. A lot of people don't like titanium. It's a left-hand drive. Um, quite frankly, I can't stand winding a watch with my left hand because I'm right-handed, but I like the way it looks. So I'd, I'd be willing to deal with it. But, you know, it's, it's, there's concessions I would make. 
but still, yeah. It's a cool watch, that. no doubt. Yeah. yeah, no doubt. Love it. All right. Well, maybe you could get an inversion. <laughs> no, it still won't work. Uh, hey, four grand. Yeah, I mean, every, every good one about the, the, the another re- Grand Seiko. The retention. Yeah. Value. So this is the the, yeah. the snowflake for you and the uh, yeah. the SBGA no. two two on one. I mean, I think. Personally, my opinion is if I'm going to spend thirty thousand dollars on watches, I don't already have a um, a spring drive, and I think spring drive is technologically just a phenomenal idea. I know it this is, is maybe yeah, a very boring, uh, a, a very boring watch to a lot of people. We've seen it so many times, um, but but I, I love it. Like I absolutely love it. Um, so yeah, and you know it, it's a cheap watch. You know, like it's not that expensive, really. In the in the world of watches that we live in, it's not an expensive watch. I think, I think it's worth owning. Be quiet; they'll hear you. No, in the grand scheme of things, it's really not. They'll hear you guys, man. They'll raise the prices up. They do. They are, but for some reason, the snowflake they've been keeping at the space mo- at the space price. You know, you can get you can get spring drive and far more expensive watches, but they still keep this one at this price. Mm-hmm. And, that- and I do like this version with the Grand Seiko on top versus the old logo. Yes, yeah, it's it's way better that they got rid of just the Seiko and and just kept it Grand Seiko. Yeah, agree. Like on the used market, that alone is about eight hundred bucks difference. Mm-hmm. And that blue second hand for just that splash of color just to make it just a little bit interesting. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now, is this titanium too? It is. It is actually. It's titanium. It, fe- it feels like a toy when you wear this watch on your wrist. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it's not a small watch. It, yeah, it's not oversized, but it's uh, um, 41 mil. So it's a, it's a nice, perfect size. It's a great everyday watch. Uh, uh, I'm not the biggest Grand Seiko fan, but, but this, is, this is a neat watch. I went, to, so like, um, there, there, there's an eight, we have a Grand Seiko AD in Minneapolis where I live. And, uh, you know, the weekend they became ADs. I went down there and mm-hmm. I was going to buy this watch, but they wouldn't give me a freaking discount. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Like, I'm I, I'm right here. I'm telling you, I want to buy this watch. Right. You just have to play your part of the game now and we'll make this deal happen. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't play their part of the game, so I just walked out. You know, like all right, stuck to your out. stuck to your guns. That's a good thing. Well, you learn something every day, and today I learned that Neo is blonde. I'm blonde. Yeah, no, I'm not blonde actually. No, I thought you had to be. I thought there was residency requirements for Minnesota. Well, yeah. I mean, let's not talk politics. I mean, right. no, that's more racial. But okay, go ahead. But, All right, so uh, yeah, it's a cool watch, Neo. Neo. Next watch. Let's move okay. on to Neo's next watch. All right, hold on. Zenith. Mm. Wow, look at this. The Define Venter. Yeah. I mean, look at that. What I mean, freaking genius! I mean, I've never actually seen this in person, but um, I would definitely like if th- if there was an AD in the country that had this watch, I would go look at it for sure. Um, you know, it's, the escapement is just space age in my mind. I mean, this is like. A space age watch, um, and it looks pretty badass. I mean, yeah, it kind of looks like the worst parts of Ublo. The parts of Ublo I don't like, and I do like a lot of Ublo. Mm-hmm. Like it has that look of the things of Ublo that I absolutely can't stand. But at the same time, in this watch, given the way the watch works, I freaking love this watch. You can't get them though. That's the problem. I, I've never seen this watch in the wild. No, I I've never, I, I'm not. F- 
I've never seen it. I'm not really a fan of the defies, to be honest with you, with that star shape on the uh, dial. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm yeah. not going to fan, like, but it's... it's a, you know, this has sort of like that piezo silicon escapement that just vibrates. Yeah, yeah. It's a fascinating looking watch. It's... Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the look is, that, that, that's what I said, right? Like, it's it's got that Ublo look, that uh, that skeletonized Ublo look that a lot of people are just turned off by, including mm-hmm. myself, actually, to be honest. But in this watch, I, I don't know what it is about it. It just looks so cool to me. Yeah. Mm. Um, so you went for the three watches and a beta, uh, didn't you, Neo? You, your final well, watch. I just, you know, if you, you you gave me money, so I wasn't gonna leave money on the table. I'm like, well, what watch would I actually buy for? Like, I don't know. I think it was one thousand four hundred dollars or something like that. Yeah. And I was this like, is a, the Marathon G Star. Yeah. That's a nice watch. <clears throat> It is marathon Canadian brand making watches for the U.S. military. I mean, got to be got to be reliable, hasn't it? Yeah, and this is quartz. Like I, I, I'm really having a hard time committing to a quartz watch. Like I really do want a quartz watch, and mm-hmm. um, I'm having a very hard time committing to one. Um, but at the time you ask me, this would be the watch I would buy. Yeah, it looks lovely. Is this DLC? Yeah, yeah. It's definitely cool. And it's got the tritium tubes, which is neat. I have a, a Tracer, which is the uh, the watch brand of MB Microtech, who are the ones who actually make the tritium tubes. Nice. And it's right. it's got a it's got a quartz ETA movement in it, and I love that watch. Yeah, yeah. See, I want to watch it like that. Like, I want to watch it just like that. I just can't decide which one. Because there's so many cool ones out there, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But I still think like there's room in the market for somebody to come out with a really kick-ass quartz watch. Mm-hmm. You know, like you could go get like those old Amigas, the the Seamaster quartz. Mm-hmm. I just can't stand the bracelet on them. But those are freaking awesome quartz watches for like not very much money. And I put NS somethings. NS somethings are the last four in the uh, private chat. Okay, just sure. give me a second here. Want to buy an oyster quartz, Neo? No. <laughs> no. I, you know, the, there's only a few Rolex watches that I actually like. It's it's you know it's it's just there's only four Rolex watches that I actually like you know that I can easily obtain that is okay so here we go This is the watch I chose uh, yeah. uh, last week. Great minds think alike, NS. I love this yeah, watch. Uh, I absolutely thinking, love it. He was hoping that he'd get some discount on this one, allowing a bit more for his budget. So uh, mm-hmm. he, was, uh, he chose this one. It was a cracking watch. I mean, I, I nearly chose this one as well, but I knew you <laughs> chose it. So, uh, what, with the, the I mean, watch? the Casa Fagliano strap and... Uh, mm-hmm. Beautiful dial and it's it's gorgeous. It is. It really, truly is an amazing, amazing watch. Well, hell, I'll take eight of them for two hundred pounds my, for two hundred euros myself. <laughs> <laughs> if that was only the case, if that was only the case. Okay, so then we're gonna move to the next one. Uh, and these again are NS something's choices, NS something's choices, yeah. yeah, pretty predictable. I mean, he's taken a JLC as first watch, and uh, he's taken a Moser for his second watch. Whoops, the Moser Pioneer Center Seconds. This is a uh, with a green dial, he said he'd go for, which is mm-hmm. gorgeous. Yeah, green look at that. Red. He said he'd go for the green or the red, but I, I've picked out the green for us to look at. And uh, very nice. Yes, yeah, a lo- lovely looking watch. Okay. 
Okay. The uh, third one he picked was, we'll see, the Kodoki one. Oh, son of a bit. Yeah, I love this watch oh, too. Really nice watch. Yeah. Look at that. I love those hands. Yeah. Look, look at, at that me. movement. Would I have killed him to put a guilloche on that freaking dial with that much dead space? Mm, yeah, but you know what? The, yeah, exactly. It would jack the price up ridiculously. And, I, you know, I, he does everything himself, so I don't know whether he knows how to guilloche or if he had to bring somebody else in to do that. It would definitely jack the price up on this by a lot. Gorgeous watch, uh, but it's a beautiful yeah. watch. Now, would you actually, if money Sorry, wasn't if money wasn't consideration, would you still take the Kodoki one over the Kodoki two? Hmm. I don't know. I That's don't a know. tough call because I like them both. Yeah, and the, just the hand craftsmanship. Yep. On the dial, and twenty-four hour. And his final choice, like many of us, is a brand we've many of us cho have chosen. I've chosen, Neo's mm -hmm. chosen, and uh, NS has chosen the same brand. He's gone to Tudor, the Pelagos. Uh, a watch he actually owns himself oh, already. Right. Yeah, yeah, he owns yeah. it to himself yeah. already. The Blue Dial Pelagos. It's a great I think watch. that's probably like. Uh... The watch that Ennis owns that would most surprise people that he actually owns. Mm -hmm. I agree with you, Neo. I agree with you. It's a beautiful watch. How can you not love that blue? It's amazing. Great, yeah. Lovely. Very cool. So that was the wrap up, I think. I think. Uh... All right, all right, Rancher. Do you have any 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 watches? Uh, yeah, I emailed them to you. You did. All right. Let me see if I can pull those up. You know what? We'll save them to next week. Yeah, we're, we're already uh, approaching an hour and forty minutes. Hey, so ID I guy, ID guy, come on, step up, dude. I want to see what ID guy has to say. I, I want to see his horses in this race. All right. Yeah, definitely. Listen, ID guy, please uh, send us your, your yeah. four watches, 25,000 um, pounds, no Rolex, no Omega. Yeah, and not just one watch and keep the money. Four watches. Right, right. channel for that one. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm gonna post the uh, I'm gonna post our uh, our email address, and uh, please email them to us, okay, guys? Yeah, definitely. So explore to uh, yahoo.com. If um, what I'll also do is I'll go through the chat and where people gave us their collection in the chat, I'll copy it out, and um, we'll keep track of it like that as well. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, it's been lovely having everyone join us today. Hey, thank you very much for tuning in. It's uh, been lovely to have you. And yeah, uh, it's thank, thank you very thank you very much to the rancher for uh, taking us through his omegas. So it's been lovely. Thank you very much, Clive. Yeah, yes. it's really nice thank seeing you, the ladies. Thank you, Rancher. We really appreciate it. Yeah, we've got some beautiful vintage watches. Uh, that's right. The biggest problem was digging through the box for him. <laughs> Clyde, I don't, I don't mean to be a dick or anything, but can you, can you take, can you retake photos of some of those? Because ah, uh, yeah, they're yeah. really cool watches, and you could, I know you could take better photos than those. Well, you see, the thing is, I, I only take good photos in the car. <laughs> I it's something about the lighting. <laughs> I cannot explain it. I just wanted to say congratulations as well to John Claude Beaver, 
to um, Tick Talking and to Tennessee Mike for winning the competition right. in the uh, Discord. Winning the competition in the Discord the other week, this week, and uh, for hopefully you'll get your prizes and you they'll be very nice. Yeah, congratulations, yeah, so guys! Congratulations. Um, thank you once again for joining us, uh, guys. We really appreciate it. Um, uh, spread the word. Uh, let everybody know uh, that you know uh, about the channel. Give us a thumbs up if uh, if you can. We'd appreciate that. Um, thank you, Neo. Thank you, Thomas. And a big uh, thank you to the rancher for uh, sharing just yeah. a small part of his uh, amazing uh vintage collection and uh, we will uh, see you all again next week next week uh, guys so take care everybody have a great yeah. rest of your weekend and we will talk to you later yep will do see you later, next time, guys thank you very much later